Okay, tonight we start reading My Big Fat Zombie Goldfish. A Frankly Shocking Tale. Chapter 1. The Evil Scientist. Yesterday, my big brother Mark turned into a real-life, actual evil scientist. I mean, he was always mostly evil anyway. You know, knocking me down things or over things, locking me in things or out of things, squashing me under things or between things, that kind of mostly evil stuff. But lately, he slid up the evil scale from mostly evil to nearly totally evil. It started with the way he talked. Oi, Tom, he shouted. Remote, now. Mark spoke in short words like his brain had shrunk or something. He grabbed the remote and kicked my foot away. Moron, he mumbled. My best friend, Pradeep, who lives next door, says that moron is a big brother word for little brother. His brother Sanj, who's also mostly evil, calls him that too. Luckily, Sanj is always at boarding school, though, so he can only be mostly evil to Pradeep during school holidays. I told my mum about Mark going more evil, but mum said it's just that Mark is home... Uh, home... modal. Homonal. Ah, which I think is why he's moaning at home a lot. She said... He can't help acting evil. Well, she didn't say evil exactly, but she, she should have. She said it's because he has lots of hormones racing around his body. Just when I thought Mark couldn't get worse, Granny and Grandad got him a chemistry set for his birthday. It came in a huge box with, with big official writing on the front that read, Warning, only for use by children over 12 years old, to be used solely under the supervision of adults. While I was reading the box, Mark thwacked my head from behind. Don't touch this, got it, he said. I walked away, rubbing my head, mostly because it hurt, but also to get my head out of the way in case he decided to thwack me again. He took a while, he took out a white scientist coat and looked at all the stuff inside the box. There were bottles. There were bottles and test tubes and cups and little stirring things, all made of glass. Real, breakable glass. Mum looked at the chemistry set and leaned over to me. Maybe you shouldn't touch it, dear. It looks like an accident waiting to happen, she said. Yeah, I've got a few minutes before that accident I'm going to cause. I can't wait. Mark put on the coat and turned around. He folded up the collar, shoved his hands in the pockets and let a creepy smile spread across his face. And you know that squirmy, prickly feeling you get when you let a millipede crawl on your arm? I had that feeling, but in my stomach. Mark had turned into an evil scientist. But I didn't know how evil he could be until he came home the next day with the goldfish. Chapter 2 a fish in a bag. Now, we've had goldfish before. We won them at church. Uh, we won them at a church fete by throwing ping pong balls into little bowls they were swimming in. They didn't live very long, though. Mum said it was because the fish all had concussion from being hit on the head with the ping pong balls. I had concussion once when I was four, after I accidentally ran into the front door that Mark accidentally slammed just shut, just uh, as he accidentally yelled, Run, Tom, run! That was back when he was just mostly evil. I remember the door shining a tiny... I remember the doctor shining a tiny torch into my eyes and then asking me if I could name all the Teletubbies. I told her that Teletubbies were lame and then threw up on her shoes. Not to be evil, just because I had to, you know. She said I had concussion and needed to stay in the hospital overnight so they could keep an eye on me. So the day after Mark... So the day after Mark got his chemistry set, he came home after school with a goldfish in a little plastic bag and headed straight upstairs. Mum and I followed. Did you go to a fete? I asked. Moron. He shot me a look as he pulled his earphones out of his ears. It's from the pet shop for school, science week. Why do you need... Mum started to ask. When Mark shoved a letter from his bag into her hand, she read aloud, Class 7M will be doing experiments on the effects of pollution on marine populations. 
Students will show photos of their experiments for, to the class tomorrow. She looked at Mark. Okay, if it's homework, she said as she headed down the stairs, at least you're doing something green. Mark put on his white scientist coat and took out his chemistry set. As he unpacked the box, I got that creep crawly millipede feeling in my stomach again. Mark should have done one of those ha evil scientist laughs at that point, but I guess he was still learning the ropes. Mum shouted up from downstairs, Mark, look after your brother while I run to the shops. I'll be back soon. I heard the door close and looked over at Mark. Normally, as soon as Mum left, Mark would start acting mostly evil to me, like when he caught me reading his mint condition return of the Attack of the Undead zombie comic. He wrapped me in beach towels and wedged me in the dog flap until the neighbours complained about my shouting and Mum had to come home from work to unwedge me. Oh, the good old mostly evil days. But now that he was an actual evil scientist, he was too busy... Uh, to think of things to squeeze me into or trap me under, there was definitely less torture, but more shouting. Touch nothing, moron, Mark growled at me as he went out into the hall cupboard. He came back with the old goldfish bowl, filled, filled it with the bathroom sink and dumped the fish inside. I pressed my face up against the glass. This goldfish was fatter than the ones from... Um, from the fate, it had big bulging eyes and a long wavy tail with three fins, and it kind of looked like a really bug-eyed mermaid, if you squinted enough. Then, as I squinted at the fish, it squinted back. Mark was too busy reading the back of a jar from his chemistry set to notice. The fish swam up to the side of the bowl and peered at me through the glass, its little mouth opening and closing. I know it sounds crazy, but I swear it looked like the fish was saying, help me. Mark unscrewed the lid of the jar. My millipede feeling got worse. He took out some test tubes and mixed up a bottle of truly evil-looking green mixture. What are you doing? I asked. Polluting, he grunted and tipped some of the green stuff into the water with a fish. Stop, it could hurt the fish, I shouted and tried to grab the bottle. Mark shoved me back to, on the carpet with one hand while he added some brown powder to the grey and grey flakes to the fish bowl. I tried to get up, but he held me... F held me firm by pushing his size 7 trainers down on my chest. He grabbed his phone and snapped a picture of the fish swimming around in the gunky water. What will it do to the fish? I gasped, with the last bit of air left in my lungs. Dunno, he said. That's the experiment. He laughed, an absolutely perfect evil scientist laughed. Man, he was a fast learner. Then he put his phone back in his pocket. I'll come back later to take another picture, and then I can flush it. Mark lifted his foot off my shirt and I sucked in a lung full of air. Chapter 3. Fish 999. I did more than touch it. I reached into the bowl and scooped it up with my fingers and ran to the bathroom. Come on, fish. Hang on. You'll be okay now, I muttered as I ran. The fish was covered in green gunk and it was flapping about in my hands. At least it was still moving but it wouldn't last long, all gunked up like that. I tried to hold it in one hand while it, I turned on the tap and tried to wash it, but I could feel it wriggling through my fingers. Then slurp, it slurp, flipped out of my hand and landed in the toilet. Splash! I dropped down next to the bowl. The fish kind of bobbed about and swished its tail, but then it went still and leaned over. And our, our other goldfish all did that leaning thing too, just before they went belly up and died. I raced to the bedroom and got my walkie-talkie. Tom to Pradeep, come in, Pradeep, over, I said. Roger, Pradeep answered. I mean, Roger, Tom, or Tom, Roger. Anyway, I'm here, over. Pradeep, it's code red, I shouted. Over, quick. We have this code of important stuff we both agreed when we were back in year one. Yellow is stuff like girls are nearby. Blue is stuff like there's a dog digging up the gross food from our packed lunches that we buried. Orange is stuff like there's a teacher parent coming. Mm. Red is the most important stuff you can imagine, like aliens are invading the neighbourhood, or escaped elephants are trampling the playground, or somebody is murdering a goldfish. If you're trying to figure out the system, it's not like traffic lights or anything. It's the colour of jelly beans from least good to best. I'll be there in a double, Pradeep said and hung up. We're here, on the double. I was still staring at the leaning fish in the toilet when Pradeep ran up the stairs. In here, I called. What's up, he asked. I pointed to the fish. Pradeep bent down and looked closely at it. Did you go to a fate, he asked. No, it's Mark's, I said. Part of his evil scientist plan to murder goldfish with green evil scientist stuff. We leaned over the toilet bowl and stared at the fish again. 
Did you learn anything on your Cub Scout first aid uh, day that could help him? I asked hopefully. We didn't do goldfish, he said. The fish tilted to one side, then the other, then onto his back. Oh no, he's going belly up, I shouted. I reached into the toilet and turned the fish right side up, but he just floated upside down again. Oops. Upside down. Uh, what did I miss? He just floated upside. Oh, I missed one. Again, when I let go. Pradeep, we need to do something. Quick, I told him. He'd be okay. He's counting on me. It needs CPR, Pradeep said. On a person, you would press on their chest and count, and count, or you would shock them with those battery packs attached to the paddles they have in hospitals. I saw it on a TV. We have batteries, I said. I ran into my room and took out the batteries out of my alarm clock. Then I raced back to see Pradeep laying the fish on the shelf by the sink. I put the open end of the battery on him and flip. The fish jerked. I looked at Pradeep and I did it again. Flip, flop. This time the fish started to wriggle like it did when I first when I first grabbed it out of the bowl. We quickly filled up the sink and dropped the fish in, and it started swimming around. We did it, said Pr said Pradeep. Uh, I said, Pradeep and, and I did our se secret celebration high five. Two slaps up, two, sl two down, elbow bumps, knees, fist bumps, left, right, left, right, then we rock, said at the same time as we bumped fists in the middle. You shocked him back to life, said Pradeep, like Frankenstein in that movie. Hey, let's call him Frankie after the monster. Hello, Frankie, I said, tapping on the side on the side of the sink. He stopped swimming and slowly turned around. And that's when I swear he looked at me right in the eye and winked.